Hello and welcome to this oil painting time-lapse demonstration. Stay tuned to see how I turn this blank canvas into this. My name is Alexander Fjernset and I work as a professional fine artist in Sweden. For those new to this channel, you can find me on Instagram at afjernset. This week I finally started working on a couple oil paintings and not just color studies like you've seen me paint in previous videos. Today I want to show you my blocking process for this dreamy barn owl painting. This is the first painting I've started on in quite a while. I have a bunch of paintings in the works which are more or less finished but waiting for their finishing touches. They're waiting on the shelves in my studio for the time being until I figure out how I want to proceed with them. Sometimes this process can take a long time, months or even years. So in the meantime I've been painting a bunch of small studies and now I finally felt ready to develop a couple of them. There's not much planning behind this particular painting, however. I had some spare paint on my palette one evening, and I thought of a new approach to, the, to this image, which I'd painted previously a couple years ago. But I ended up not liking that one and destroyed the entire panel. So I sat down that evening and painted a quick study of this new version. I really liked the simplicity and feel of it, and decided to go ahead and paint it bigger. Usually I only paint on ACM panels these days. I like the sturdiness of a panel better than the bounce of a canvas. Right now though, I'm running low on large panels, and I need to save the one I have for commission painting. However, I remembered I had an old roll of canvas saved in my studio, so I stretched that canvas and got to work. It took a bit of getting used to painting larger again, and especially getting used to the give of the canvas. I also decided to change my palette a bit from when I painted the color study, so that took some getting used to as well. When I painted the study, I used permanent rose, a uh, transparent red violet. I also used cadmium red and orange, as well as titanium white. I excluded the permanent rose and added ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow light instead. I figured I'd have a larger range for shifting the tone of the painting with a blue and a yellow added to my palette, as opposed to just two reds and orange. I will probably add permanent rose to the palette for the second layer though, as it allows me to pump up the chroma of the red and the lighter tones. If I lighten the red with orange or yellow, it also shifts the color. If I add a bit of permanent rose to that mixture, it brings the color back towards red and increases the saturation more than the cadmium red can do. If I want to darken my reds without sacrificing saturation, permanent rose works great for that as well. Essentially, with this palette, I can darken my reds in two ways. I can mix them with a complementary color to red, which is green. Since blue and yellow make green, I just add some ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow light to my red. Doing that will also lower the saturation and make the color mixture more grey. The other way is by mixing my reds with a darker red. Since permanent rose is a significantly darker red violet, I just need to add some of it to either my cadmium red or orange, and it will darken the color and still look vibrant and saturated. The blocking process itself is pretty straightforward. I start with some lines to find the shape of the owl, and I don't have to commit to anything at this stage. In fact, my very first lines were too far to the right, as I'm sure you noticed, so I shifted the drawing over a bit to the left. When I'm confident that the overall shape of the owl is correct, I start massing in color with large brushes. One reason I love oil paints is how you can push and pull the paint around. If something needs to be adjusted, you can easily do that by moving the paint around in the beginning stages. I keep doing this over and over until I feel good about the structure of my drawing. I don't require an exact likeness to my photo reference, but just want it to look real enough. At the same time as I'm adjusting my drawing, I try to match the colors and tones of my reference. I'm not worried about getting everything exactly right with this first layer though. The second layer will allow for plenty of adjustments and fine-tuning. When I'm happy with everything in this first layer, I soften everything carefully with the feathery strokes of a fan brush. 
I can introduce the feeling of motion blur with this technique and try to be deliberate with the direction of my softening strokes. And that's the first layer complete. Now I wait a couple days before I continue with the second and final layer. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that video. I hope you enjoyed this time lapse demonstration of my blocking process. Click like if you did and let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about my process. I'll see you soon. Until then, take care and stay safe. Bye.